Hello there. In this video we're going to introduce you to using the torus knot plus curve um, to actually create your own personalised ring. Um, so if you start Fluid Designer up, first of all you want to go to the uh, Rings folder and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the basic all UK sizes object first of all so if you just drag and drop that onto the workspace uh, and I'm just um, holding down the center mouse button and just rocking it to show you that there's your basic plane ring. Now we're not going to use this uh, object so I'm going to first of all delete the outline of it, the bevel, that's the cross section of it uh, and I'm going to switch off the selection and switch off the view for that particular ring and I'm going to select, select a slightly different size so I'm going to show the UK size P plus uh, and, and allow the selection of it. So there's my um, outline which I'm going to use to uh, measure the inside of the ring. Um, now we're going to use a, a torus uh, not plus object um, and one of the things we're going to need is the toolbox. Now if I click on the plus up here it will open the toolbox. I can just drag that window or I can press T on the keyboard and it will switch the toolbox on and off. So I want the toolbox open and I just need to open up this panel at the bottom because some uh, values are going to appear here which we're going to need to use. So um, I'll, just, I'll just switch that one down a bit. So if we go to add curve we're going to use torus not plus and you'll see that uh, a basic knot appears and you'll see it weaves in and out of itself and uh, what we need to do is change these values over here to create a suitable ring. Now in order to do that we've got to understand what all these values are. Well let's look at the uh, surface bevel first of all, 0 0.08. Well 0 0.08 is actually the radius which gives us the thickness of this object. Now in terms of 3D printing you really want an object that's one millimeter in diameter to print as in metal. I mean, you can go down to 0 0.8 but one millimeter. Well one millimeter can be created by setting the bevel here at 0 0.5 because that's actually the radius. Okay so that thickens up my object so this is actually one millimeter thick now. And you do need to take into account that it's only about six millimeters across here uh, which is why it looks like it does. But this thickness is one millimeter when the bevel is set to 0 0.5. Now I'm just scrolling the center mouse button and zooming in. Now if you look at that you can see it's it's not particularly round. Well there's something called the bevel resolution and if I switch that down to 1 or to 0 you can see at 0 it uh, it looks well it looks a bit kind of triangular squarey cross section um, what you need to do if you want a rounded off object is switch the bevel resolution to its highest value 4 and as you can see as I do that you get a more smoother surface finish so that's a value that we need there now extrude we don't need to worry about at all but we do need now to look at this resolution value here and notice there's also a resolution value at the top. Well let me just take this value right down uh, I'll, I'll leave it at uh, let's say leave it at 4 and let's see what happens. Well I also want to reduce this value from 100 right down as well so I want to I need to explain both of these at the same time. So um, I'm going to set that at let's say 8 um, I'm going to set my bevel back to 0 0.08 as well um, and so you can kind of see what's going on. Now you see it's not very smooth this object so we need to understand what this resolution 4 is here and what the resolution 8 at the top is. Well we can do that by actually setting this bezel re bevel resolution uh, right down to 0 which gives us our basic curve there so there's no uh, cross section, there's no, nothing covering our basic curve and if I press the tab key to go into edit mode remember I had values of 8 and 4 well if I count these dots here, the control points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 
Now that's not quite 8, I realise that. There's always one value missing from this. But the resolution that was displayed at the top, the 8 value, is the number of control points that are used to define um, our torus knot. Now the other resolution that I had at the bottom was 4. Well, 4 is actually 1, 2, 3, 4 points between each control point here. Now, when this object is created as a mesh and printed, the higher this number is here, the higher the number of arrows that we have here, the smoother the object will be and the more faces there will be. Similarly, the higher the number of control points, we've got 7 at the moment, because our value is set at 8, the higher that value... Uh, the, the more mesh we'll have as well. So let me just come out of edit mode and let me just delete that and let me just add a curve again. So this value 4 here at the bottom, let me increase that and I'm going to increase it all the way up to 30 and I'm going to press the tab key again to go into edit mode and you'll see now there are many more arrows here. In fact if we count them there should be 30 arrows between each two control points. So 30 arrows between each two control points. And the more arrows, the smoother our surface. So again, I'm going to uh, delete that object and I'm going to uh, add it again. So my suggestion is that you, recommendation is that you put this resolution at 30. Um, so we now need to increase this resolution up here as well because that will change the number of control points that we have. So if I just increase it like that and if I press the tab key you'll see that there are lots and lots of control points now and again the more control points that there are the smoother our object will be. So we just had uh, seven or eight initially we're now up to about a hundred I think. So let me just add another curve uh, and what I would recommend is that you set this value at 180 to give us a really smooth surface finish. Um, so those are the resolution values. This counts the number of arrows between each set of control points. This is basically the number of control points. So what do we want to do now? Well, let's put the bevel back on again. Uh, and I'll leave it at 0 0.08 just for the moment. We do need to thicken that up later because this wouldn't print. It's far too thin to print. And let's look at some other values that we've got. Well, we've got this height value. Um, well, I'm going to recommend a value of 5 for that. And you'll see what happens there. It scales up the object. And if we go to the main information icon over here, you'll see that the Z value, the blue arrow is the Z direction, the Z value is 10. In other words, it's twice the height. So this value here of 5 is in fact the radius, if you like, here. It's the distance from the uh, plane to the top of about 5 millimeters. So giving you a total height of 10 millimeters in the Z direction. Now that value can change a little bit as you change these other values down here. It's not set in stone but it gives you an indication. Now we've got another value here, the scale factor. And if I just hold down the left mouse button and increase the scale number, you'll see effectively what it's doing is increasing the internal radius of the object. And I'm just going to type again in the value 5 there. And if we look at the main information icon over here, you'll see that the X and the Y value, red is X, Y is green, they're about 20, 21. Well, that's actually the length of the outside. So, in other words, looking down at it from above, this diameter here is about 20 millimeters. In other words, four times the scale value. So, the height value was double the value you enter here. The diameter, the internal diameter, is approximately four times the value that you set here. Now you will need to play around with those a little bit later on to actually get your perfect ring size. But that's what those values do. Now the important values to, to adjust are the P and the Q values. And uh, if we just change those, you can see what it does is it changes 
the uh, shape of our ring and we can change the number of uh, circles that appear um, with the P and the Q value and uh, what you can do is change the appearance of it until you get to a ring shape or ring appearance that satisfies you. Now in terms of making a ring you want to keep these values quite small. Now the P and Q values represent the number of times it goes round and the number of times it flips between itself because it's inter interlacing is this object. But from, you know, what you need to do is to say, just play around with those numbers until you get an appearance that suits you. Um, but you do need to change this bevel up at this point. So I'm going to set it at 0 0.5, which gives me a thickness of 1. So that's a ring that will actually fit. And the reason that you do need to set this value is if you set these values here really high, you can see that things go pretty strange. You don't really want to be printing an object like that. Um, so from the point of view of uh, using a, a ring, uh, again, you don't want to be doing something like that perhaps. I mean, it will print, uh, don't get me wrong, you can print something like that, but you probably won't quite get that surface. Um, so I would stick from the point of view of doing rings, keep the values quite small. Um, so 5 and uh, 6. So that will give you a ring that will print. If you just look at it from the uh, front, you can see what the uh, shape of this ring is going to be like. You can see here the Z value, so that's 10 millimeters across, so one centimeter. So that's a reasonable size for a ring. And this is the appearance of the ring. This is how it will look when it's on your finger. So this object will in fact print. Um, and the only thing that we really need to do now is to make sure we absolutely firmly set the internal diameter. Now. We're going to need to scale this object in order to do that. And you do need to be aware that once you start doing that, these objects will be set in stone. These values here, you won't be able to change them anymore. So if we just uh, go to view and view from the top, uh, our ring is not quite the right size. So um, I'm just going to press S on the keyboard and scale it out a little bit. And you can see all these values have disappeared, so we can't use this toolbox anymore. So I can press T on the keyboard and close that down. So we can't change the number of uh, rotations or the, uh, the view of this anymore. We are stuck with that shape now. All we're trying to do is to size it. Now when you do scale in Fluid Designer, when you scale a curve, you've always got to do Control A and apply the scale. And notice that the uh, shape did change slightly, the curve, uh, sorry, the ring did change slightly as we do that, so um, we do need to scale it again. Now, at the moment the snap feature is on, so I'm going to switch off snap, and I'm going to press S on the keyboard, and just move it in slowly, so I'm not snapping this time, I'm moving in slowly, and that uh, looks almost as though it's in line, but I do need to do Control A and apply the scale. Um, and if I just zoom in again, so you can see how close it is there. Um, I can measure this with the ruler to see what that gap is. Well, it's, it's less than 0.1 of a millimetre, so, you know, um, you could probably get away with that as being the, the, the right size, but you can always keep scaling this in and just until you're really happy with it. So, um, S for scale, bring it in, click and then do control A and apply the scale and just observe it. Now, you know, we are really talking about very small values here. You don't really need to worry about that as being the difference between um, our size P plus inner diameter of 18.4 millimeters and the inner diameter of this ring that we've created. So that's probably okay now. So for fine-tuning of that, you do need to switch the snap off. Um, so there's our torus knot ring. And um, as is usual in Fluid Designer, we don't recommend you save that. We recommend that you go to File and Export. And if you export it as a wavefront object, and I usually do it to the desktop, and we could call it torus knot ring. 18.14 uh, millimeters. 
And there is our finished torus knot ring. Um, we can see up there also actually that it's, uh, it's got about 60,000 faces on this object, which is perfectly reasonable. But you can see that it's pretty smooth when we zoom in. Uh, and that's because of the resolution values that we set. Okay, so that's how you can use the torus knot plus object, uh, sorry, torus knot plus curve to create a ring. Thank you.